people. I already gave everybody like the, the general introduction to the session, what we're going to do, what the lineup will be, a little bit in general about Douglas Lang. And I also told them that you have joined our French friends uh, earlier, uh, but that we are the lucky ones that get you for the rest of the evening. Yes, so, that's true. Although, although they've already started drinking, so... Um, yes, that was the trade-off that we, we had have to the do. We advantage just now, but we will, yes. we will be the lucky ones at the end of the night, for sure. Yes, that's absolutely the trade-off we made, but we are, we are happy to do that. And I think it's, it's not going to be long before we're tasting two. So I'll give, I'll give you the, the, the podium now, uh, Dale. Um, I'll, I'll interject here and there uh, with questions from the audience. I'll see what they're saying in the chat, and we'll make it a fun night, I think. Perfect. I think you're right. That sounds good to me. Well, good evening, everyone. It's uh, it's great to be here. I'm really grateful for you all um, joining. My name's Dale Perry. I'm sure this was already covered briefly, but I'm European Sales Manager for Douglas Lane. So my job is to make sure that um, all of our markets over Europe um, get lots of Douglas Lane whiskey and, and make it available to you guys. Um, so hope the fact that you're all here tonight shows that uh, Sunoco are doing a pretty good job um, for us in Belgium. Um, and yeah, just thank you for taking the, the time out of your evening. I, I just want to um, apologize, obviously, for the, the delay in the original date of the tasting. Um, I appreciate that um, that was probably frustrating for a lot of you and, and maybe it was not easy to rearrange for tonight. So um, I'm really grateful that you have and I'm pleased that you're all here. Um, and I, I will I could go on and give you a boring length of excuses, um, but unfortunately the, the pandemic and, and Brexit and make our, are making life a lot more difficult for us to, to do a lot of things at the moment. Um, but I really appreciate you all you all coming in tonight. Um, and I'm sure you will not be sorry that you made it because we've got some amazing whiskies mm -hmm. for you. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up a presentation here. Don't worry, this will not be death by PowerPoint. Um, I'm just got, I've got a few slides to show you um, where I'll show you some mostly nice pictures of our whiskies. Um, and then the rest of the, the tasting we can we can talk through. Um, and if anyone has any questions, I'm sure this has already been covered, but stick them in the chat or, or whatever you guys think um, is easiest. And, and hopefully we'll, we'll get I, some, some I actually allowed everybody to unmute themselves so they can oh, talk cool. to us too, if they want. Uh, I didn't force them, but they can if they want to. Excellent. So unmute if you want to ask any questions or, um, or if I'm talking too much, stick it in the chat. Um, or if you don't want to, to talk, then stick it in the chat and we'll, we'll pick them up. Um, so I'm just going to share this presentation with you guys. So hopefully you can all see this okay? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so welcome. I'm just going to give you a quick update on what we're tasting tonight. So this is the lineup for this evening. Um, we're going to start off um, with the Lowlands region. Um, we're going to move our way up to the Highlands, Speyside, the Campbelltown. Um, then we're going to move over to the Islands and finish up on Isla. Um, so that is our kind of normal tasting pattern. Um, and we've got a lot, of, a lot of fun products to taste for you tonight. So everything that you're tasting tonight um, is a limited edition release from our re remarkable regional malts range. Um, so it's, it's really quite a special tasting where we're tasting some of the most limited releases that we, we've done in these brands. So um, I really hope everyone enjoys it. Now, you've already been in this tasting for uh, 20 minutes or so, and I'm conscious that some of you might not have even tried a whiskey yet. So let's fix that um, and start on our first whiskey before I, I bore you with any more conversation. So the first one we're going to try um, is the Epicurean Ruby Port Finish. So if everyone pours it into their glass, hopefully you've all had a chat. You've probably all done that before I before I came on in anticipation of tasting the first whiskey. I, I couldn't stop them. We can't check if they did, but... Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you got a bottle of it there, Jorian? Yeah, I, I, I filled all the samples for you and sent them out. So oh. I have I have what's left in the bottle what here. A, so. What a delight. I'm... Man. I'm, so I'm I'm not showing it. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can show it on the screen. It's just, it's on the presentation. Yeah, um, sure. It out. So yeah, this, that, there, thanks, for, thanks for showing that bottle. You're more privileged than me because uh, I've not actually received a bottle of this yet. It's, it's mm. that new. Um, it's not even released yet that I've not, I've not had a, a bottle yet. But I was sent a small sample, um, I'm pleased to say, um, on this lines. So 
the Epicurean Ruby Port edition. This is part of the Epicurean Wood series. Um, and I'll tell you all about that in a minute, but let's get our nose into it um, and let's have a taste of this whiskey. So if everyone gives it a little nose. So straight away for me, it's so different to the regular Epicurean. It's spicy straight away and you've got this kind of tropical sweetness to it. The, the color is also very special. I mean, it's, yeah, the color is amazing. It's, it's pink. And, and ev yeah. Everything at Douglas Lang is, is natural coloring. So that all comes from the, the intensity of those uh, ruby port casks. Mm -hmm. So for anyone that knows the original Epicurean, the color and the nose are just a world apart from the usual. So for our first whiskey of the evening, cheers, everyone. Slan Javar, enjoy. Cheers. Mm. Wow. So for me, I'm actually getting so strict. I need to take my mind away from the fact that this is the Epicurean because it's mm -hmm. it's so different in flavor profile. For me, I get a kind of ginger and nutmeg, a bit of chocolate. It's and very that, spicy, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I You get that sort of a kind of tangy, spicy, raspberry finish that lasts for absolutely mm -hmm. ages. The good, the good thing uh, that uh, Wouter is saying in the chat. Well, we, we've also we've already got uh, some some uh, tasting notes there. But uh, what Wouter is saying is, um, love the nose. The port is there, but not overwhelming. But the the the, the good thing I wanted to sh share is the character of the Epicurean is not lost. I mean, it's still there. Absolutely. It's still. It forms, it kind of forms the foundation. Um, and then everything after that comes from the Ruby Port cask for me. Mm -hmm. So this is part of our, our wood series that we're, we're calling it for the Epicurean. So some of you may have tried some of the previous releases, such as uh, Coat Roti, for example. Um, and this is a, a kind of ongoing series we have where the kind of light flavors of the Epicurean really take well to, to special wood types. Um, so in this instance, we've got Ruby Port. And you can see by the color and by the smell and the, the flavor how much um, imparts onto this whiskey. So for me, it's, it's a really interesting series of whiskeys. Um, and I think it because the Epicurean has got a really nicely kind of balanced light flavor profile, um, you, can, you can have a really big impact with quite a short time of aging. So I think you, you mentioned there, um, Jerry, on the... the the kind of balance so you still get the epicurean it's not overpowering mm -hmm. so the kind of i guess the secret to that success and i hope you all agree that that we have succeeded in this is to to make sure that we taste it every week every couple of weeks to make sure that we get that balance where we've got the influence of the the wood and the the cask but we don't want it to take away from the mm -hmm. entire character of the epicurean do you know how long the finish was on the on the ruby port cask we're not we're not allowed to uh, to convey that information. Well, okay. I say I'm not allowed to convey it. I'm not even allowed to be told it. Um, okay, that's uh, that's the kind of family secrets. I mean, it's um, I believe normally we set a time frame between three and six months. Yeah, it um, won't be too long, I think, because otherwise no. the port would be overpowering. Yeah, exactly. And you find with with wine and port casks that you can achieve in in three months what you would in maybe a couple of you know a couple of years in in sherry. Yep. Um, so it's it's it depends on on obviously the fact that we'll get it first fill as well, which which obviously has a big impact. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for me, we've I, I mean I I don't know about you guys. I don't know if it's just because it's the first whiskey of the evening, but I'm really trying not to drink this too quickly because it's mm -hmm. uh, it's really delicious. Yeah, Jean said it in the in the chat too. It's very drinkable. Um, uh, it's very I mean quaffable i mean uh, yes yeah, is the word yeah. you could you, you use is a, is a very good word for that yes um so just to get into a little bit of the the stats if you will um it's bottled at 48 percent, as you you'll see in the um on the slide and mm. um, we filled two 400 liter wine casks which bought which each of them yielded 684 bottles um and we've packed it in a, in a really nice gift tube that um i'm sure you you've got along your your bottle so no, I just got the bottle. I didn't get just to get the, the gift tube. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. That's Glenn keeping them for his collection, I think. <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> um, so you, you said you have you have two casks filled. So uh, this is a single cask. You have, you have another one, which is another right. single cask, which will be different. 
it'll be it'll be slightly different. I mean, the intention is to make them as similar as possible. So the, the reason that we've done two is because the demand for this product now is becoming so high uh, mm -hmm. because of the success of the previous Wood Series releases um, that we've, we've tried to release two casks at the same time. So naturally, because casks are all different, they will be slightly different in flavor profile, but it's our jobs as the, the tasting experts um, to, try and, to try and produce the whiskey so they are as similar as possible in this yep. instance. Not always, but in this case, we're... We're trying to have a consistent product. Yeah. There's a couple of questions uh, popping up in the chat here. Do you know which port uh, was used? Which port company? Uh, again, unfortunately, I don't want to be this guy, um, but unfortunately, SWA means that we can only communicate if the uh, if the, we've got full full. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? A permission from the the winery, um, okay. which unfortunately we don't. So. Um, not allowed to say, I'm afraid. Okay, so we'll have I to go you, I'll look. I'll be able to give you more fun information later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Uh, another, another good question, and I think uh, I know the answer already. What distilleries are used? Which malts are used? Is uh, is there also some Kings Barns, or is it mainly Ockentosh and Glenkinchy? I love, <laughs> I love this. Starts <laughs> off with the only three questions that I really cannot answer. But <laughs> I can, I can give you some clues on this one. So, um, I cannot say for definite what is and what is not used because this session has been recorded and I could be fired. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, there are there are certain distilleries that allow you to, to communicate their name and there are some that don't. So a couple of that we have on this, um, on the Epicurean do not let independent bottlers uh, communicate. However, there is a major distillery in Glasgow, which um, is very well known and produces excellent whiskey, um, mm -hmm. normally triple distilled. So you can you can uh, make your own assumptions about who that might be. I think um, Mark might know it. Mark Dermul is in the in the in the in the session here. Uh, he might know this uh, this this uh, distillery. I am completely unaware of any Glaswegian distillery that triple <laughs> distills. <laughs> I haven't uh, got a clue. I recognize Mark, and I know that uh, Mark will probably know all of our secrets. <laughs> not, not all of them. Not all of them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so obviously that that distillery will be, will feature. Um, also, you'll you'll find another couple. I think you mentioned a couple of them actually, Julian. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, the, the, in the in the question, uh, Kings Barnes, Ockentosh, and Glenkinchy were mentioned. So, so two two of them, yes. Uh, the St Andrews Distillery, we do not um, work with in this in this release. Um, and then there's another uh, new distillery um, that we use near near Edinburgh. So um, okay. I'm sure you all can you can make assumptions on that. Um, so you're I asking. Think... Unfortunately, all the good questions are coming in about the product that is not released yet. So I can only <laughs> tell you so much about this just now. Um, but for sure, all the next releases coming up, guys. Don't worry. I will not keep my cards so close to my chest. Oh, but we have we have a knowledgeable crowd, so they they have they've worked it out by now. So. Uh... Good. Good. That's no worries about here. that. Um, just while you guys are finishing your Epicurean Ruby Port, if you're like me, you've, you've not got very much left. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Douglas Ling. So I'm guessing if you're in this tasting, you probably have an idea about who we are. Um, but if I'm going to give you a, a two minute whistle stop tour of 73 years of Douglas Ling, um, it's that we are an independent family owned business. We've just entered our third generation. So our chairman, Fred Ling, is handing over the baton uh, to his daughter, Cara, um, and her husband, Chris, who is our CEO. Um, and it's a really special time where you've got the experience of Fred and the ambition of the next generation coming through. So we have been around since 1948. We have been bottlers and blenders ever since. Um, and as of the last two years, we have also become distillers as we acquired Strathairn Distillery. Um, so that's a really exciting project for us, a nice kind of feather to our cap. Um, and a lot of you will also know that we're in the process of building our own distillery in Glasgow, which is obviously incredibly exciting. For us as a company, the things that are really important to us are our history and our heritage, um, our credentials, so being recognised in the industry as being one of the best at what we do, um, and also making sure that our whisky is honest and natural. So that that means that every whiskey we produce, every drop of Douglas Lane whiskey is non-chill filtered, no artificial colouring, um, and all high-strength alcohol. 
And the reason for that is because it's designed to give you as much flavor in your whiskey glass as is possible. Um, and for us, that's incredibly important that, that we make whiskey for it to be as good as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. So that's a very quick whistle stop tour of Douglas Ling. I could tell you about the company for hours in our 73 year history, but I'm guessing most of you want to get on with the tasting as do I. There was, there was one more question, uh, yeah. Dale. Um, sure. uh, Stefan is asking, uh, was the port a single cask uh, or, uh, or uh, is it the whiskey that's a single cask? It's the whiskey that's a single cask. So okay. um, we'll, we'll get the, the port individual casks sent over and then the whiskey will age in those port casks and we will release that as a cask in isolation on its own. So it's, it's the whiskey that's single cask, but good question. Any other questions or is everyone ready for their, their next whiskey? I'm going to take that as next whiskey, please, Dale. Yes, I think so too. All right. So this one is, is really exciting. I, I mentioned to you guys um, at the start of this tasting that you're tasting all limited edition releases. Um, and the really exciting news for tonight, even though the last whiskey you tried has not been officially released yet or announced, um, this one, along with two others that you're tasting tonight, are being launched this week. So that is incredibly exciting. It's very, very unusual for us to, to be able to host a tasting like this where we've got three brand new whiskeys. Um, but it's, it's really, really exciting. So this is the first of those three. This is Timorous Beastie Meet the Beast. And I'm, I'm putting emphasis on the word beast because that is uh, <laughs> in capital letters. Um, so just to give you guys a, a little bit of an insight, um, this whiskey here is designed to show you the, the beast side of Meet the Beast. So everyone looks at the pack and sees a nice little mouse, um, but that nice little mouse has got a lot of strength and a lot of fun. So um, that's what this whiskey was designed to do. So we'll have a taste first and then I'll tell you, tell you a little bit more about the whiskey. So if everyone gives it a nose, for me, I get a, a immediate burst of vanilla, which I get all, mostly with, with Timorous Beastie all the time. It's that big Highlands honey heather smoke, uh, big, ha sorry, honey heather, heather sweetness. A bit of kind of oak in the background yep. and a slight kind of fruity backdrop. And then if everyone gives it a taste and be careful, a, little, a small sip to start off with because it is cask strength. And again, cheers, everyone. Slange. Mm. Wow. Okay. So for me, straight away, really sweet, like kind of ca almost like candy floss and honey and kind of pastry. And then that finish is still going. You got a little bit of kind of spice in the finish. And I'm still, ta I'm still tasting the finish. Wow. That's a, so this is a big whiskey to come in second in the lineup. Yeah, um, it is quite early in the evening uh, still. So it is. But I thought I'd get everyone turbocharged at the start so we could uh, we could get everyone having a bit of fun early on. Yeah, wake them up. Yeah, great. yeah for sure, or put them to sleep one way or the other. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's. We had a bit of a discussion on on how to do the tasting, um, and we're going a little bit all over the place. But I think it's always nice to go through the regions in in a kind of order. So we're going from the lowlands up to the highlands and we're, we're increasing in intensity. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this specific um, Timorous Beastie bottling is, is much more punchy than most because as you'll see by the slide, this one is at cask strength at 54.9%. So for me, this is actually so light in mouthfeel and so sweet that I actually don't think it needs much water or any. But if, mm -hmm. if people are finding it a little bit too kind of alcoholic, which can be the case with cast strength, I would recommend adding just a, a couple of drops of water um, and seeing how it changes the whiskey. So that's that's the point of, for us, the point of bottling whiskey at cask strength is because if people like it that way, fantastic. It's, it's to your taste. If people think it's a little bit intense, you have the option to be the, to be the blender, to be the distiller and, and reduce the strength down a little bit to what suits you. So yep. that's very much the case with cask strength. Some of them for me should be at cask strength and I think they're at the best at cask strength. Some require a little bit of water, I think, to, to open them up. So it's up mm -hmm. to you, whatever you, you prefer. 
So, and this is a, a limited edition of uh, 3,600 bottles. That's right, uh, yeah. And it's all bourbon casks, so it's about 12 casks. Is that, is that about right? Your mass is better than mine. No, it's, bit, it's a bit more. It's a bit more. It's about, it's about 15, I think, yeah. Yeah, so Something I think like normally, we're, normally we're getting sort of a three, right, 350 bottles um, to a cast. So mm -hmm. um, let me just do the cheat. I'll cheat here and do the... Yeah, it'll uh, be about 12. Mass. Yeah, like so about, about 10, 10 to 12 casks, I would say. Right. So for a you know for a regular company, this is a super super um, small batch limited edition. For us, it's actually quite a, a medium sized limited edition because obviously we're you know a small independent business. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea behind this whiskey and the concept was this year we wanted to really um, test the boundaries of Timorous Beastie. Timorous Beastie, we've always said is is a timorous little mouse, but has big fight. So if anyone knows the Robert Burns poem, um, which this this is based on, it's all about this little mouse who everybody underestimates, but the mouse is really strong, um, and it has a big a big punch, and that's how what we feel about Timorous Beastie. You smell it, and it's really sweet, and it's nice, and it's light, but then mm -hmm. you taste it, and it's got this big big flavour. It coats your mouth, and it's really sweet, and it's intense, um, and gives you a taste of the the Scottish Highlands. So we wanted to take that to a new level with this release by going at cask strength um, and really showing off the uh, the big flavors of Timorous Beastie. Yeah. Again, I, li I like the this one I got the tube from. I, I like it because there's all these scratch marks on the on, on, yeah. on the side yeah. of it. So that's that's nicely done. Yeah, that's our. And then it, and, and then it still says on the back suitable for vegans. Yeah. So, <laughs> which is important. It does not contain mice. Yes, which I think is always important to point out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's um that's our little timorous beastie so um for us yeah it's a look it's it's a, a really lovable brand um but the whiskey is is pretty serious and, and pretty punchy um, and that's what we kind of want to get across there were some some uh, some older versions of timorous beastie with uh, like age statements also like 21 years old i, I think there was absolutely. a 40 year old at a certain moment absolutely yeah so we've done a uh, a lot of high age timorous beastie because it's from the highlands you find as it ages, you get this real treacly caramel sweetness that's really delicious. So we're and we're fortunate enough that the distilleries we work with in Timorous Beastie, um, have, we have some high age stock. So we've released an eighteen year old, a twenty one year old, a twenty five year old, and a forty year old, um, all of which are are really really exceptional. Um, so we've we've done a lot of limited edition releases of of Timorous Beastie, um, and all of which have have been received really really well. Mm -hmm. So I've, I, I got a lot of uh, tasting notes in the in the chat. I'll just go through them quickly. Um, so Wim from Dram Gazette says, "Bit shy at the nose, vanilla, caramel, toffee, heathery, floral, honey, sweet baking spice, coconut, a handful of dried fruit, citrus, light charred oak smoke, barley cereal." That's that's quite some tasting notes there, Wim. Great. Uh, Heather and honey, even more vanilla, buttery spices, lemon and pear. Uh, Mark is also adding some vanilla icing, sugar, honey, spicy finish. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Wim asks this one is ten out of twelve. I don't know what you mean, Wim, with, uh, with that question. Ah, yeah, the the age probably. This the the age uh, of uh, oh, of, uh, of the. So we we're not communicating an age statement on this, um, but with with Timber's Beastie, you can normally be quite safe that the. The age is normally quite high on average. Um, so I would say for this release, you're probably looking at between 10 and 12 years old um, on the average age statement. Okay. So we, we don't communicate the age and we, we don't do that for a lot of our, our regional malts. And the main reason for that is because the, the blended malt category is there to, to showcase something kind of different and something interesting mm -hmm. in whiskey. And we, we want to move away from the perception that whiskey should be judged on the distillery name, the the a number of, of years that it's been in, in cask. Mm -hmm. So for us, even if we have a whiskey that's sometimes a 12-year-old um, or minimum of 12 years old, we won't communicate it because we want the whiskey to be judged on the on the quality of the liquid. Would you would you say that uh, the the recipe for the blend of th this version is this is it the same blend that the same malts that you use for the normal version and just at cask strength or is it a different uh, recipe? No, it's so it's the same distilleries, 
but the balance of the distilleries will, will be a little bit different. So the kind of ratios. Um, so the distilleries we use in this one are Dalmore, Glen Geary, um, and Glen Goyne, um, and one or two more little secrets. Um, and we we they'll all be in this, but there'll be a slightly different ratio to to try and create the flavor profile that we wanted at cask strength. Yep. So the, the product we make, the regular Timmer's Beast at 46.8%. 46.8% will be the best. Uh, the ratio of distilleries will be the best that we can make based on that ABV. When we go up to 54.9%, the flavor profile changes. So we've mm. got to adjust our, our recipe a little bit to make sure it's, it's as good as we possibly can be. Mm. So to, re- to get to the point where we release these products, where there's a lot of hard days spent in the tasting room um, and tasting maybe t- anywhere between 10 and 30 different kind of blends different recipes if you will um, and eventually we'll, we'll select one that we believe to be um, the best for that particular release mm-hmm. we feel for you for the hard work you're doing it's not easy um, mm-hmm. but somebody does have to do it yes <laughs> um, and just while you're finishing or enjoying the rest of this now this one's cast strength so um, if people are like me, they're taking a little bit more time over this one. Um, and I'll just talk to you about a couple of things that have happened lately at Douglas Lang. So um, I mentioned at the start that, um, that our credentials are really important to us. Um, in the whiskey industry, and in the spirits industry, being recognized by your peers is, is something that's really nice, especially for a, a small independent business like us who, who relies on, on their reputation. Um, and for us, there's been a couple of big pieces of news recently. Um, so you will see this handsome uh, gentleman on the screen, Mr. Fred Lang, our chairman, um, has recently won the Lifetime Achievement Award um, at the Spirits Business Awards. So that is a, a massive, massive um, accolade. Um, and we're, we're really proud of Fred, who's now been in the, the spirits industry for 55 years. Um, next year will be his 50th year at Douglas Lang. Um, so it's, a, it's an amazing achievement. Um, and to top it off, uh, we also won the, the Spirits Bottler of the Year um, for the second year in a row at the Spirits Business Awards. So um, the Spirits Business Awards, for those who are not aware, is, is one of the biggest um, and, and kind of most highly regarded um, Spirits Awards in the world. And to, to pick up those two awards means, means a lot to us. So we're really, really proud of that. And uh, hopefully it gives you guys the confidence that what you're tasting tonight um, comes from a good place and, and we know what we're doing. Mm-hmm. So hopefully everyone joined their Timmer's Beastie. Um, I can move on to the next whiskey, or if there's any questions, um, then I can. There, were, there weren't any questions in the chat uh, as for now, so uh, I'll, I'll keep an eye on that uh, as we're uh, proceeding, uh, Dale. So okay. go ahead with number three, I think. All righty. I'm also conscious that um, I think Dirk was going to. Oh yeah, you you don't know yet. Uh, Dirk uh, called us about an hour before we started that he he fell ill. Oh no! Uh, so he couldn't join us. He had his uh, his first shot of the vaccine yesterday, and oh, okay. he's he's experiencing uh, some fever and stuff. And we we told him uh, tasting eight whiskies in that uh, condition wasn't wasn't the right thing to do. So that's why okay. it's just me tonight. Okay, okay. I thought you were maybe going to tell me he had his first shot of Timmer's Beastie Meet the Beast and was uh, unwell. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I don't think so. I think it was something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, no problem. I just realized I've, st- I've stormed through two whiskeys there and I, I thought to myself, oh, I've, I've stepped on Dirk's toes. Um, but no problem. Not at all. Okay. So with that case, let's crack on then with the next whiskey. So um, this one I will pour myself. And we've got the Scallywag 10 years old. So if everyone fills their glass and does the usual, give it a little bit of a a swirl and a nose. Again, I mean, straight away here, I'm getting a lot of the kind of typical um, Scallywag notes, but really amped up. So for me, that is kind of red fruit, I've got a kind of like a, a kind of mocha nose and a bit of kind of honeycomb. So I get that kind of fruity mocha honey sweetness. As as you're saying it, Jean says in the chat, coffee bean. Nice. So, yep. Good. I'm not going crazy. 
Because normally, with Scallywag, normally the uh, coffee beans and, and mocha is not a, a, a kind of flavour tasting note. So there, there's obviously something that happens here when we um, when we go to 100% sherry um, and, and 10 years old. So if everyone can now have a little bit of a sip again. Cheers, Sanjol. yummy so for me mm. you've got those big spices that are straight away and then the spice kind of evolves into a kind of cocoa coffee kind of cereal note um and a little bit of kind of toasted oak that's i've not tasted this specific whiskey um since it was originally launched a little while ago so um that is really taking me aback by how good that is um so for me so, sorry go on go on yeah i was just gonna i was just gonna say so this was launched in 2018 if i'm correct that is correct yeah so this was launched we we, we did a big launch of um a lot of limited editions as part of our um 70th anniversary year so over the course of the year we, we released a whole bunch of, of really exciting launches the idea behind this launch was that um 70 years of Douglas Lang was like 10 years of Scallywag because uh, we count Scallywag in dog years, obviously. Yep. So the idea behind this launch was we thought to ourselves, well, we don't have very much 70-year-old whiskey or not many that tastes very good. So what, what, um, how can we release a 70-year-old whiskey? And, and uh, some of the clever whizzies in marketing suggested <laughs> we do a 10-years-old Scallywag. So that's a, dog, a dog is always a handy thing to have around. A hundred percent. So yeah, for, for me, this is a, a really um, special whiskey for, for two reasons. So one, it, it sim symbolizes the 70th year of Douglas Lane, which for us was, it was the year that I joined the business. So obviously a very, uh, a very significant year in their history. Um, but it was also <laughs> the year um, where we released this product and it was the feedback on this. This was so good that we actually released a Scallywag 10 years old as a permanent launch. So this is the limited edition. And this is a little bit, the flavor profile is quite different. Um, but for me, this this gave us the, uh, the confidence that doing a 10 year old permanent Scallywag release um, was, was something that, that people wanted. So that's why we now have the, the permanent, but this was the, the original kind of limited edition in 2018. Um, and for me, is is really special for that reason. It is a really nice whiskey, and it. Uh, I mean, we just came from a fifty four point nine whiskey. This is only forty six, but it uh, it stands its ground. I mean, it uh, yeah. it, it it doesn't really um, suffer from having a, a stronger whiskey before it. No, you're right, and I think that was one of the interesting decisions we had tonight because. Um, you can have the temptation to always do a whiskey tasting in order of strength, assuming that strength is the, the biggest factor for intensity. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of the time it's not the case. So um, for this whiskey, it's only 46%. So it's nearly, you know, 10%, 9% less than the last whiskey, which is mm -hmm. a lot. But because the space size and the sherry is, is so intense, actually it, it really stands its ground. Yep. So hopefully everyone agrees that this whiskey is not lost after the cast strength whiskey that we tasted previously. And, and um, no, absolutely. There, there's, there's some mention of it in the chat too. So there's some, uh, some nice little uh, tasting notes again from uh, Wim and Mark, uh, vanilla, caramel, red and dry fruit varieties, plum, dark, some dark prune, chocolate, little tobacco and leather dry in the back. Uh, red apples and caramel says Mark chocolate, some wood shavings, cider apples, uh, these, these people, we need to hire these people to do the tasting notes. Oh yes, you should. You should. This, yeah, they, this they're is great. The highest, at this. the highest caliber of tasting notes I've I think <laughs> I've ever heard. I normally get some really weird stuff, but this is a, a very <laughs> professional tasting notes we're getting here. Yeah. Uh, then there's Mark again going some autumn leaves that remind me of Glenbergie. So we're we're also guessing here which uh, distilleries we used. Join saying space side like Macallan, Glenrothes, Mortlach. Uh, whoever said that is absolutely spot on and um, the three distilleries shocking. that we we predominantly use for scallywag um are mccallan mortlock and glenrothes 
perfect job. 10 out of 10 for you then on the score. Uh, Stefan is saying, if I didn't know, I would have guessed this one was stronger in ABV. So that's in, in relationship to what yeah, you're saying. I think about that's a, a, that was a point I was actually going to make um, earlier was that exact point. I, mm. If you tasted these two blind, um, I think you would think this was the same or, or maybe stronger ABV mm -hmm. because of that spicy intensity. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, and the other thing, you know, for, for Scallywag as well, um, now obviously we've put a, a little dog in the front, which is not just random. Um, it's actually, it carries a lot of uh, feeling and a lot of heart for Douglas Lane because um, this dog, these, these fox terriers have always been in the Lane family. So Fred has a, a fox terrier just now called Cooper. Um, and this bottle was designed on Binks, who was the previous fox terrier, um, that unfortunately passed away just before Scallywag launched. Um, but his memory lives on um, mm -hmm. through the Scallywag brand. And if anybody has a bottle of Scallywag at home, you if you look closely, you will be able to see that one of the teeth is missing from the dog, the bottom yeah. incisor. And so that's not a design flaw from marketing. Yes, exactly. I don't, I don't know true. if I can show it here. Ah, yeah, yeah. There you, you can yeah. see it now. So you can see one of the, the bottom incisors is missing of the dog. So that's not a, a design flaw. Um, the, the dog actually had that incisor removed after a, after coming out second best in a battle with a toy. Um, <laughs> so so it's, it's, you know, it's these kind of personal touches that mean a lot to us as the, you know, as the company and as the Douglas Lane family business. So um, it gives us a, a little bit of kind of character and, and carries a bit more passion with our, our brands as well. Just while you're enjoying the rest of that scallywag that I'll, I'll enjoy with you, um, I'm going to just talk you through the regional malts a little bit. So as I entered the tasting, um, I, I already heard Jerry on doing a, a good job of, of going through these um, for me. So I'm not going to spend too long on them, but I will give you a, a brief overview. Um, so these are a, a range of blended malts. Um, and the idea behind each of these whiskies is that we create the ultimate flavor profile from that specific region. So the Remarkable Regional Malts are designed to give you a kind of tour of Scotland's major distilling regions in one whiskey. So we've got the Epicurean from the Lowlands, which is light, floral, grassy. We've got Timorous Beastie from the Highlands, which is the biggest distilling region by land. Um, and for that, we tried to make it really kind of heather, honey, sweet, a um, little bit of lemon, um, and keep that big Highland character. We then go up to Speyside for Scallywag, um, which is a sherry matured. So you've got a lot of um, kind of spicy, dark fruits. Um, and, and we've got obviously got a big sherry influence there. You move over to the, the West Coast Islands and you've got Rock Island, um, which is, is really maritime, salty, fresh, with a little bit of smoke. And then you go a little bit south to Isla, which of course is the, the most famous distilling region. Um, and that's where you find Big Pete. So you've got the usual kind of smoky, tar, ashy, salty um, flavors with that. And then of course the sixth in the range, which is a little bit forgotten because the, the supply is a little bit less consistent, but the Goldrins from Campbelltown, um, which is our sixth regional malt. Um, and this is uh, an amazing malt where you've got um, a li little bit of smokiness, really kind of nice sweetness. And it's like a, it's like two whiskeys in, in one um, from what used to be um, Scotland's kind of whiskey capital in Campbelltown, um, but now only has two or three distilleries, um, whereas it used to have around 30. Um, so it's, it's a really interesting whiskey. Um, now, the whole kind of point of, of this range is to, to obviously give you a tour of Scotland but it's also to showcase the category of blended malts. Now for us, blended malts are the best kept secret in whiskey because you can, obviously we work with the best distilleries and single cask, single malt distilleries over Scotland, and we can create what we believe to be the kind of perfect whiskey from each region. So for us, we're taking one component and trying to um, add others from that region to make something that is better than the sum of its parts. So there's a, a cheesy a cheesy saying that we have at Douglas Lane, which is if a single malt is like a violin, then a blended malt can be like a, a finely played orchestra. Uh, and that's exactly what how we think of it. Don't get me wrong, if it's bad, 
you can make bad blended malts. We've we've tried thousands and thousands of of different recipes, so we know there are are bad recipes for blended malts. Then it's a it's a crime because you're butchering great single malt whiskey um, by by marrying it together. But if you get it right, you can make something that is feels more complete and that is better than the sum of its parts. So at Douglas Lane, we create single malt, we create single cask, we create blended malt, we create blended scotch. And out of all of those categories, we are firm believers that if you make the perfect blended malt, it is superior to anything you can you can try elsewhere. It's not that's not to say that we had anything against single malts and single casts because we make them and we love them. And mm-hmm. um, it's just to say that the skill, the art, the the kind of process involved in creating a blended malt for us um, is what we're we're incredibly passionate about. So this range all began uh, 12 years ago with Big Pete. And since then, it's gone from strength to strength. And we're now in the amazing position where um, we've got this range of whiskies in 70 countries. And um, we've now got the uh, permanent aged range. Um, we've now got loads of limited editions. We've got every year Big Pete Christmas and Big Pete Vichyl, which people get incredibly excited about. Um, and we've got a real cult following for what is, um, I hope you agree, a, an amazing range of whiskies. Yeah, I was. I was uh, before you arrived. I was talking about them as a little bit like the the foundation of uh, what you're doing with the with the company that that the rest is uh, built on. Um, yeah, I think it's, that's it's it's exactly. grown out to be in the last twelve years to to become that. I think. Yeah, you're exactly right. Um, mm. And for us, you know, we'll always do single casks, and we'll always love them. And now that we're becoming a distiller as well, it's incredibly exciting, and we're, we'll have. Um, I'm sure over over years to come, we'll we'll have a focus on that. But for us, the focus of Douglas Lang and company is this range of whiskies. Um, and that's because we believe that this is the best quality um, and consistent range of whiskies that we produce. So it's, you know, if anyone's tasted our single casks and has maybe tasted, you know, a 34-year-old Port Ellen or a um, 30-year-old Macallan or, or whatever, these are phenomenal whiskies. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for us, the real strength of our, our company lies in, in these products. Um, and we, you know, we're firm believers in the, the fact that the, you know, the whiskey industry historically has done a brilliant job of marketing single mm-hmm. malt whiskey. You know, you talk to any, anybody that knows something or knows nothing about whiskey. And the first thing they say is I only drink single malt though. <laughs> you know, I'm a man of quality. I only drink single malt. And I was that guy. I was that guy, you know, 10 years ago or so. Um, but then I discovered Compass Box and I discovered Douglas Lang and I, I discovered that, you know, holy shit, you can <laughs> you can make you can blend whiskies, but actually for the purpose of achieving a greater quality, not for the purpose of trying to achieve something that you sell en masse for cheaper. Mm-hmm. And that for me was a, a light switch moment where I, I kind of went, oh, wow, this is this is interesting. Um, and that for me was was a kind of real game changer and what made me incredibly passionate about about mm-hmm. coming to work for Douglas Light. So yep. for sure, you know, there will always be people who who have opinions on this. And it's not to say that anyone's right or anyone's wrong. Um, it's just for us, this is a category that is really underappreciated. And um, the fact that everyone's in this tasting just now, um, I'm hoping that, that a lot of people agree with that. I think they, they they do agree, and they're they're also already tasting the goldrons now. Uh, yeah. so. <laughs> yes. Sorry, this all you know. This is funny. I do these tastings, and the bit where I talk about the regional malts is always the bit where people get yeah. thirsty because I'm I'm obviously very <laughs> passionate about this. So yes, yeah, yeah. everybody, you are correct. Sorry, let me finish this. Move on to the goldrons. So this, as I mentioned before is our Campbellton single, uh, our Campbellton blended malt. So made up of single malts, single casks from Campbellton um, and put blended together to, to create what we believe to be the ultimate taste of Campbellton. Yeah. I'm just gonna have a little sip of water, refresh the palate. Yeah, there's, so, a, there's, there's already some, uh, some uh, guesses about which distilleries are dominant <laughs> and are in there. So, but well, I think the choice is not that Big exactly. in Campbelltown. If anybody knows the, the kind of t- two or three major distilleries in Campbelltown, you've already pretty much guessed what's in the Goldrons. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm sure everybody probably knows the main one that is in here. Um, and I'm sure people can guess what other other distillery or two we, we use in this. 
Mm -hmm. So if everyone gives it a little swirl to open up the whiskey and get your nose into it. Now, for me, the first thing that I get is that kind of, like immediately I get a bit of kind of sea air, a little bit of salty sea air, mm -hmm. a tiny bit of smoke just right in the background. And then after I go my nose in a couple more times, I get this sort of like manuka honey seaweed, almost a little bit of kind of um, coconut oil, cream coconut oil on the nose. For me, there's something surprisingly fresh or light in there too. Yeah. Some kind of citrusy touch or something, something like that, something very fresh. Yeah, I get, I get the freshness. I get it in, in more of a kind of um, slightly salty sea air kind mm -hmm. of way. The iodine that uh, Jean is talking about. In yeah, the chat. yeah exactly. something like that. Yeah. So, cheers, everyone. Cheers. So again, actually, on the on the palate, for me, the first thing I get again is that kind of marit little bit of maritime character, which then quickly moves on to just kind of sh sugary shortbread. Um, I would say. Um, yeah, and then it kind of moves on to like a kind of cereal note. I always love the Goldrons because it takes me, the Goldrons is one whiskey. I, I like to think when I, you know, I'm quite quite good at tasting whiskeys now where I kind of pick up flavors, but the Goldrons is always one where I need two or three attempts to mm -hmm. pick up all the all the notes because it it's like three, it's like two or three whiskeys in one. You think you taste something and then all of a sudden you've moved on to, you think you taste maritime saltiness. And then by the time you thought that you've moved on to kind of, shortbread and by the time you thought that you've moved on to a more kind of cereal fresh smoky finish mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a really it's a really incredible whiskey um, i think mark here used the word that i that i think is very correct is uh, funky it's it's pretty funky, it's funky. Uh, for, for, for a whiskey. Funky. and for sure it's you know you definitely get that funky kind of funky note second or third take at it i think um and then the finish for me as well, you've got this kind of little bit of puffs of smoke, a wee bit of vanilla. It's just a really um, confusing but interesting and, and amazing whiskey for me. Um, every time I taste it, I do I go through the same thing where I, I think I've I think I've sussed it, and then I taste <laughs> something else, and I'm like, oh no, wait, wait, I'm not there yet. Yeah. Um, but the Goldrons as well, you know, just to to tell you a little bit about the Goldrons. This is obviously from Campbelltown. And for those of you who know Campbelltown, you know that there's a, a very small amount of distilleries. So the amount of uh, spirit that we can get from Campbelltown is lower than the other, the other regional malts, which is why we talk about this as the sixth regional malt, because we cannot, we cannot, you know, sell or, or push this as much as, as Big Pete, for example. And um, we have to be a little bit more careful with our, our supply. So that's why we do this in batches. But the really kind of interesting news for tonight is we are have just made a decision that actually we've kind of negotiated enough um, whiskey <coughs> of the Goldrons to now make this a, a permanently available product. All right, so that's good news. Really good news, really good news. So it'll still be a little bit more expensive than the rest, I'm going to warn you now, um, because it's still more exclusive and the supply is, is smaller. However... We're going to remove the batch numbers from the Goldrons moving forward, and it's going to be a permanently available um, regional malt. So really exciting news, and and we're uh, that when I think when we were able to deliver that news to to the company internally, where everyone was really excited. So um, yeah, it's definitely good news. What what does uh, Goldrons mean actually? So the gold. Uh, you, this is like mind reading. I was just about to go on to that. So the uh, the Goldrons is literally, I mean, it translates as Bay of Storms. Um, and the, the inspiration for the name comes from the caves that are around Campbelltown. So if you if anyone's been to Campbelltown or if you've maybe seen pictures, um, the coastline has all these caves in it. Um, and these are quite famous in Scotland. They're, they're really beautiful. Um, and they're, they're um, cra you know, the waves crash into these, these waves, uh, sorry, into these, these bays, uh, these goldrons. And the inspiration came from a story. So if anyone sees in the, the bottle on the, the slide, um, you can see there's a spider crawling down. So it's a really beautiful bottle and that 
spider, even though I absolutely hate spiders, this has got a cool story. So um, back uh, when Robert the Bruce was fighting the English, and this is when Scottish people get very passionate. Um, so when Robert the Bruce was fighting the English, um, he went to hide in Campbelltown because we were getting, you know, we were getting badly beaten at this point. We were wave after wave um, and, and Scotland were, were um, getting defeated by the English. So Robert the Bruce went to, went to Campbelltown to hide in the caves. And when he was hiding in one of these caves, he saw a spider that built a web. And the next day, a big wave came in and washed the web away. And then the spider came back and built another web. And the next day, the, the rain came in and washed it away. And the spider moved a little bit to the dry patch and built another web and it stayed. And that made Robert the Bruce sit and think that um, if the spider can think and adjust and, and, and uh, be that resilient, then so can Scotland. And so he went, he went back and, and uh, ended up defeating the English um, after, after a lot of years of, of hard battle. So right. for us, that story was was really cool and something we were, we were quite passionate about. So um, that's where the inspiration of the spider comes from, and that's where the the inspiration of the Goldrons comes from. Mm -hmm. So if you thought I was passionate about blended malts, then don't get me started on defeating the English. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, nice yeah. one. I think uh, I saw in the chat uh, Wouter is saying the finish reminds me of Springbank Whiskey School, and uh, I I did Springbank Whiskey School too uh, a long long time ago, and I kind of I, I kind of get what you're saying there, uh, Wouter. Uh, it, it, yeah. It's really this is Campbelltown. I mean, yeah. The, the uh, we well, tune. If if you could pay us the biggest compliment possible, you would say this is Campbelltown. So that that is exactly what we're trying to achieve. We want you to taste this whiskey and go wow. That makes me think of Campbelltown. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's amazing. And, and obviously Springbank, um, you know, is a big influence um, for us on this whiskey. Um, so to hear that is is really great. And I'm, I'm pleased, uh, pleased that we've set out what we wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to quickly move on and talk about a couple of things. Um, so obviously tonight you're tasting all of the limited edition bottlings. So normally this is a kind of side conversation for a tasting and um, where we maybe taste one or two limited editions, but you, you lucky people are getting to taste um, only limited edition releases tonight. So we've got the regional malts that I told you about before, but we also have this, this, you know, I think uh, Glenn and the Sunoco team might tell you that we have too many limited editions uh, <laughs> because it keeps, it keeps them very, very busy um, on social media and with customers and everything like this. But, um, we're in the fortunate position where we're a, a small family business and, and we can experiment a lot and have a lot of fun with our whiskies and, and create a lot of new concepts. And that's what we kind of, we pride ourselves in. So it's something that big companies can't do because they take so long to research and so long to produce a product and so long to come up with a launch plan. But we're much more nimble and, and much more experimental. So it allows us the ability to produce lots of cool limited edition products. So I'm sure most of you will know that uh, Big Pete Christmas has become incredibly famous now all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had loads and loads of really interesting limited edition releases. So um, I'm delighted to, to have you all here tonight um, to taste some of our, um, to, to taste some limited editions that are maybe six months or a year, or a couple of years older and taste some limited editions that are incredibly new. So it's a, it's a really exciting tasting. Mm -hmm. And as well, along with the limited editions, we also have a, a lot of other kind of strings to the bow um, of the regional malts range. So this is a little bit of a, a table that I always like to, to talk about because um, it gives people a really simple overview of the, the regional malts in terms of region and flavor profile, but also don't be afraid to take some great whiskey and make some brilliant cocktails with it. Mm. Um, you know, I, I appreciate there might be some people in this tasting who are more purists and only drink their whiskey neat. And hey, that's that's great. If you're buying great whiskey and drinking it neat, I'm certainly not going to give you into trouble for that. Um, but if you are someone that likes to have a really, you know, I, I'm talking good cocktails here, you know, not not a, a, a whiskey and cola or something, no offense to a, anybody that does that. But for us, you know, it's about getting really, really quality ingredients, quality mixtures. And you know, the fact that we make blended malts shows you that we are open to experimenting 
um, with you know with different spirits. So um, it would be hypocritical of us to say that you can't ha- add an amazing um, amazing kind of garnish or an amazing mixer or amazing cocktail recipe to these these products if you feel it makes them better. So for us, there's some really interesting cocktails, some really interesting food pairings as well. Um, and and it's stuff that I would encourage you all to experiment with because it's it certainly makes my whiskey life more interesting when mm-hmm. every so often on a Friday night, I maybe make a, a little Rock Island margarita or I'll make a little big peat smoky sour or a Timmer's Beastie Old Fashioned. And it, it just means that, you know, I drink a lot of neat whiskey, don't get me wrong, but every so often it's nice to, to drink a really amazing quality cocktail mm-hmm. um, and don't be afraid to, to experiment with that. There's, there's some suggestions uh, coming into the chat now. Uh, Wouter is making whiskey sours with the Epicurean. Uh, Mark nice. is making rusty nails with Rock Island. Uh, we had a we had a couple of sessions uh, earlier uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, with some cocktail bartenders and we had we had them experiment with Big Pete and with the Epicurean and uh, they they came up with some pretty nice stuff. I mean Big Pete with the, they think they made an espresso martini with the Big Pete yeah uh, stuff like that. So that's that's cool cool to cool to try out. I think yeah a hundred percent. I think the more look, the more experimentation you can do with stuff like that, the better. You might get some wrong. I've tasted some, some bad cocktails, whiskey cocktails in my time, but you'll get some right. And the sense of, of satisfaction and the, the and the kind of taste of it um, can be really, really amazing. So mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. Keep keep experimenting and, and keep trying try, trying different stuff. Um, and you know, stuff I really, you know, something like the Rock Island Margarita is an example of something where, you know, whiskey is not something you put in a margarita. And, you know, I, I enjoy a normal margarita with, with tequila. Um, a lot but a rock island margarita is exceptional so Mm -hmm. don't be afraid to don't be afraid to experiment a little bit for sure yeah nice okay we'll move on to the next whiskey i think we're up for a twist now i think we are up for a little twist nice segue so i'm getting confused about what i've drank and what i've not drank yet so this release is, is a really, really interesting one. Um, so this here was also um, released as part of our 70th anniversary year. Um, so you can see that we were doing a lot of kind of creative stuff in that year. Um, and this one was to celebrate 10 years of the remarkable regional malts. So what we did was we created a blend, a blended malt made up of all of the different regional malts. So it's ten, aged a minimum of 10 years, and you've got, you've got malts here from the Lowlands, the Highlands, Speyside, the Islands, and Isla. And so we've married them all together to create this um, kind of really, obviously this is one where we experimented a lot and we got a lot wrong. Um, mm-hmm. There were some, I mean, some really bad, bad examples of this before we got it right. Um, but for me, if you give it, let's taste it first, and then we'll talk a little bit about the, the balance. So on the nose, for me, straight away, you get, I get kind of more timorous beastie than anything else. You get sweet, kind of buttery biscuit, honeycomb. And then you kind of, on second sniff, I start to go more towards the kind of rock pools and the, the salty seaweed. So we can give it a taste. Cheers, everyone. Slange. Cheers. So that the palate is, yeah, it's super confusing at first. You've got so much going on in that whiskey. It's like I started off with a little bit of kind of chocolate and orange and then moved over to kind of vanilla and a little bit of kind of earthy smoked bacon kind of thing. There's loads going on. And then the finish is, is more kind of fruity and stewed fruits. So a, this is a, a hugely kind of complex whiskey where we've we've tried to we've obviously not tried to make it too confusing, but we've tried to give you a bit of a balance and a journey of, of these different regions. And it's fun when you taste this whiskey and you go, oh, Timmer's Beastie, or you go, oh, oh that's a bit like Scallywag or <laughs> things like that. So throughout tasting that, I was I was kind of doing that myself, like, oh yeah, yeah, right. I've got Timmer's Beastie, I've got 
Scally. Oh, there's a bit of Rock Island coming in. So, so it's, how, how did how did the blending work? So did you actually use blended versions of the, the of the the Big Pete, or did you use the components of those whiskies to create this? We used the components, so okay. we didn't we didn't use we didn't have like a bottle of Timmer's Beastie, a bottle of Scallywag, bottle of Rock. We we kind of originally tried that. Uh, it just didn't work. There was too much, you know, too much kind of confusing flavors going on. So what we ended up doing was getting a single malt from each of the regions. And then we married. So a single malt that does exist in the current range of, of remarkable regional malts. And then we, we married them together to try and create what we thought was a, a nice balance of, of all the regions. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a really really interesting process this is actually something that was happening just as i joined the company and it was i remember thinking these people are crazy like i mm -hmm. come in and they're, they're making a gift <clears throat> tube that twists and puts a yeah i'm just gonna show this to everybody so yeah you've got, you've got the tube because i was really happy that this tube was included so and you've got this <laughs> moving part that you can change around so you can get the heads onto the different bodies for every every yeah. little character there so so you have like a dog's head and a mouse's body and then a man's head and a dog's body. And yeah, there yeah. you go. So it's, it's just a lot of fun. And I remember thinking these people are crazy. What have I got myself yeah. in for? Um, but it's, it's exactly, you know, what Douglas Ling are all about. They're, they've got years and years of, of experience, history, you know, and, and quality. Um, and they use that to, to break down the boundaries of, of whiskey. Whiskey mm -hmm. has got a reputation of being a little bit, stuffy historically and it, it has all these rules but you know for us it's it should be about the, the spirit it should be about what mm. you're drinking um and i and i think we want to break down people's perceptions that a whiskey has to be this or it has to be that a whiskey should be whatever you want it to be um and you should enjoy it as much as you possibly can and, and that's really the kind of bottom line so, and also what, what i what i think is a, a big uh, part of the success of these regional malts is just the element of fun that's in there the, exactly. the the whole the whole look and feel of all these things just it's fun i mean it's it's not too serious i mean the, the spirit is serious there's some good spirit in there but yeah there should be some fun about it too exactly i mean we we work in the alcohol industry it is the the most fun industry on <laughs> planet earth um so for us it, it's insane to not try to link drinking alcohol to having fun and, and having a good time and being socializing and and stuff like that that's you know that's what everyone wants to do everyone wants to have a drink and have a <laughs> laugh and and meet with people they love and and things like that and that for us is what what the the spirits industry is all about so um yeah look the, the liquid is very serious and we you know that we're very rigorous and uh, we take a lot of time to to produce these and, and a lot of care and attention but absolutely you know whiskey drinking should be fun it, there's a, again, there's a, a, I think, you know, historically in the whiskey industry, it's maybe taken itself a little bit too seriously. Um, whiskey had to be drunk neat, it had to be single malt. You had to respect it. You had to know everything about the distillery. You had to sit in a leather armchair by a fire. Yes, I um, was just going to say, you had to have a fireplace to have a whiskey. Yeah, exa exactly. And it's no. just not, it's not what, um, it's not what they want. It was actually quite kind of elitist and you, you ruled out a lot of, um, a lot of women, a lot of young people from the industry. And actually what we're finding now is, you know, people say, uh, you know, whiskey is more sooty for a male palate. No, it's not. Whiskey's mm. just been targeted at males for so long um, and targeted at, at maybe the older generation for so long that people have forgotten that it's just a drink. And once you once you start trying it, and once you start enjoying it, you'll find what you love and you'll, you know, mm. your palate will evolve and grow and um, and that's what we're seeing now. So there's a big surge in younger people getting into whiskey, big surge in more women getting into whiskey, big surge in really high quality whiskey cocktails and food pairing and things like this. And it's, it's, all, it's all really, really positive. Mm -hmm. um, so, so long may that continue for sure. Absolutely. There's some great tasting notes in, uh, in the chat here. Uh, Mark alone has written about three paragraphs on this whiskey. Oh, I'm nice. Not They're probably better than my tasting notes. So, oh, so I'm, I'm not going to read all of it, I think, because uh, it, but it's, it's a really good uh, tasting note as I'm, as I'm uh, used to coming from Mark. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, and other, other, other people are putting in some nice stuff too. Uh, so yeah, yeah. 
Great. Good good Great. reactions here. Good. Well, listen, while we're while we're talking about this, uh, I've obviously mentioned a few times that obviously our range of blended malts is is one of our kind of big focuses. But um, for those who aren't aware, we also do a, a range of single casks. I'm not going to spend too long talking about this because tonight's tasting is all about the regional malts and it's all about the limited editions. Um, but just to mention quickly, you know, we're we're a business with with a lot of different parts to it. And one of those parts is our range of exceptional single casks. So that incorporates four different brands. So we've got Provenance, Premier Barrel, um, Old Particular, and XOP, which stands for Extra Old Particular. And on top of that, we've got a kind of another very special um, series called the XOP Black series, which is our single most kind of rare and exclusive casks. So I mentioned at the start, our philosophy to these bottlings is the same as the regional malts, which is bottle them as naturally as we possibly can to show the character of the spirit. So that's high strength, uh, non-chill non uh, non filtered and no artificial colouring. Um, and that's something that's consistent across all of the Douglas Lane um, range. So in one sense, this, the single casks and the blended malts are very different concepts. But in another sense, they're actually really, really closely linked. So I mentioned they're keeping it really natural. Um, but also with the, the blended malts, we make our blended malts in pretty small batches. So actually we're using single cask, single malts from different distilleries over Scotland. So actually the process starts off the same. And all we're doing is trying to create something that's a, a, a little bit uh, more complete with the blended malts and then trying to showcase the quality of a single cask with this range of, of single cask whiskies. So the idea is to, to add nothing, to take nothing away um, and to make the whiskey as, as kind of natural as it gets. So it's a really exciting range of whiskies. For those who, who have tried them, I'm sure you'll agree that they're um, they're a really cool, cool range of whiskies. Um, but obviously tonight we're here to talk about the blended malts. So I'm not going to spend too much time pitching uh, the, the expensive stuff to you. <laughs> Well, we, we, we asked uh, just before you arrived, uh, Dale, we asked about uh, suggestions for future masterclasses. And um, I think we can add this one to the future masterclasses too, uh, with, uh, with these products too, uh, maybe. So uh, I think Glenn is taking note already. <laughs> Never want to miss an opportunity, Mr. Mies. Ah, it's, it's actually... Yeah. Something, look, I, it's, something, I, something I'm looking forward to too. So <laughs> yeah, and the, look, the single casts are brilliant. You know, I've I've spent a lot of time preaching about the the blended malts, and rightfully so. Um, but a single cask is a different art. You know, a, a blended malt is is being a chef and 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 testing different recipes until you make something that you believe to be a complete recipe. Single cask is is patience. It is taking a cask of one cask of whiskey and letting it age um, until it reaches a peak. And so, again, a lot of people believe the older the whiskey, the better. Nonsense. A a absolute nonsense. Every single cask and every single distillery and, and all of these combinations mean that a whiskey will get better to a certain point and then it will start to get worse. And every so often it maybe gets worse and then it gets better again and it gets worse. But ultimately a whiskey has a peak. So each individual cask of whiskey will have a point where it reaches its best flavor profile from our point of view. Mm -hmm. um, and that is when we need to, to capture that whiskey and to bottle it. So we have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of casks. Um, and <laughs> each cask has a different destiny. Um, and the ones that end up in single casks, our job is to taste them every so often. So maybe... Um, we'll taste them every six months or every two years, depending on how good they are. Um, and then we'll wait until we think that they are at their absolute best. And then we'll bottle it and we'll release it as one cask only. And that's the, yeah. that's the story of the single cask range. There's, uh, there's good news in the chat. Uh, Glenn is confirming there will be an online single cask tasting around October. And there's already about six people joining. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's going fast. It's going fast. Good. So we've just sold six tickets to an event in yeah. October. Nice. <laughs> Good work, Glenn. Okay. So if you're all parched like me, yes. let's move on. So I believe we are on to our, oh God, is it bad that I've lost count? Sixth? It's the sixth, sixth of the night. Yeah. Sixth of the night. 
it's so, almost at 75% of uh, what we're tasting tonight. The tasting. So if everyone's like me, you're starting to get a bit rosy cheeks and starting to get a little bit talkative, which is nice. Um, and we're moving on to, to rock oyster cask strength. So for those of you who were paying attention early on, you'll have heard me say Rock Island mm -hmm. um, quite a few times. Now, Rock Island is the same as Rock Oyster, but Rock Island is the new <laughs> name. Um, so we changed the name about oh, two, two years ago, I would guess. Um, and the reason for that name change was because um, we found in some parts of the world, mostly Asia, uh, the word oyster was not just confusing, but quite divisive. So okay. it, it caused quite a lot of confusion because people assumed that it had oysters in the product. Okay. So there was people, a lot of people in Asian markets where the translation was not so easy and um, where they believed that there was oysters in it, so would not drink it. Okay. So we decided there was a win-win here where like Big Pete, you know, the word Pete tells you a lot about the whiskey and same with Rock Island. With the word island, you get an idea that you're getting a maritime malt. So for us, that's the one of the big reasons that we, we changed the name. So yeah. let's get into the nose. So for me, I mean, this is, uh, I've got a real soft spot for Rock Island. Um, and this whiskey, for me, you get such a fresh, salty, maritime flavor on the nose. And it's got this kind of oh, like super oceanic thing. I, I always take I always take one sniff of this whiskey and I'm on the ferry to Arran for my summer holidays. And that's when I was a kid, I went to Arran every year with my grandparents. And for me, I smell this and I'm on that Caledonian McBrain ferry on my way to Arran. <laughs> um, and it just makes me smile every, every time I, I, I smell it. So cheers, everyone. Sanjibar. Cheers. Mm. So straight away, for me, it's smoky, salty, really kind of equally balanced. I, I think you get the kind of smokiness at first. You get that little puff of smoke in your kind of palate, and mm -hmm. then it settles, and you get that saltiness in your tongue. And then it's got this kind of little kind of honey and pepper finish that it kind of eases off in your palate and it's just yeah stunning i've got a real soft spot for this whiskey it is really nice yeah so i think what what we kind of try to achieve in all of the whiskies is um obviously I've, I, you know perfectly summarizing one region and in a lot of regions it's really difficult so you know with the highlands for example there are there's such a variety of flavors in the highlands that it's really difficult to try and to try and capture one flavor of the Highlands, but we've we've done our best with Timmer's Beastie. For the Islands, for me, it's this maritime and smoke, and it's in perfect harmony. And I think with Rock Island, that's exactly what we wanted to achieve. We wanted it to be smoky, maritime, fresh, oceanic, and it's it's the kind of whiskey that you smell once and you go, "That's from the Scottish Islands straight away." Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's a, a big success of this whiskey. Yeah, but what I feel with the islands is, um, as it's mentioned on the on the bottle too, it's Orkney, Arran, Jura, Isla. Yeah, they're all very different. I mean, they they've got this this red thread going through them, as you're saying, the maritimeness. But you can't really compare a Jura whiskey to a to or an Arran whiskey to a to an Highland Park, uh, yeah. for example. Yeah. So that's that's I felt of, I was thinking this must be the hardest one to do to get uh, the, the right feeling in there. Yeah, no, you, you're right in some ways. I think it's it's both, you know, in some ways it's the easiest because it has that constant thread. So like that oceanic maritime mm -hmm. thread, but you're right, e either side of that thread, you have quite a lot of different different flavor profiles, especially with Highland Park, you know, which is more up in the, the kind of Northeast of Scotland, all the way down to Arran and Isla, which is down, you know, kind of, almost southwest coast mm -hmm. so you're covering really strange parts of the, the land here to call it a region um but for me maybe it's because i have this personal affiliation or association with this that i just taste this and i think of all the times i was on the ferry or all the times i was sailing mm -hmm. on the west coast of scotland and it just takes me screaming back to 
to those memories. So I, I'm probably a little bit biased, but for me, it gives it makes me think Scottish Islands with the first time with the first mm. smell of this every single time. Yeah, I, I absolutely I absolutely understand, and it's also the thing that it doesn't remind you of any one of the components. It doesn't remind me of either uh, Highland Park or Aran or Jura. It's yeah. something new, and that's again what you, you've told you talked about this already. It's yeah something new, some 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 of the parts that is more than just the parts. Totally, absolutely. And and the other thing about this one that's definitely worth mentioning um, is its cask strength. Mm -hmm. So some of you may have noticed that um, it's packing a bit more of a punch than the regular Rock Island. Um, and for me, I'm, I, I mean, I, you know, I think this is fantastic meat, um, but it is strong. It is punchy. You get that, you kind of get that slight ethanol finish. So I'm going to add a tiny little touch of water. I just see how that changes it up a little bit. Yeah, it's 57.4%. So, yeah. So that is, yeah, strong. <laughs> yeah. And any, any feedback on, on this whiskey from people? Well, lots, lots of, uh, of, uh, of uh, tasting notes here. Mark wrote another three paragraphs on this. Uh, really nice to read. Uh, Mark, I, I think he might be putting that on his blog later on. I don't know, Mark, if that's what you're uh, planning to do, but uh, really great tasting wow. notes. Uh, sea air, tarry ropes, I see. Orchard and citrus fruits, honey, held back peat. Hints of capers and seaweeds on the palate. Fresh citrus, not zesty. And then Tess realizes that it's cask strength uh, after tasting it. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I kind of did the same. I was talking about it and thinking of Rock Island and then read the slide and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is, yeah. 57.4%. Holy moly. But yeah. But this I mean, is a really nice dram. And I also read a bit earlier on in the chat, I don't know, ah, it is uh, Heert. He's telling Fred told me that this is the bottle he would take to a deserted island. Uh, and he agrees. Is that right? Yeah. No, I, Fred is, is not a... Somebody obviously in this room is closer to Fred than me because um, he's not told me that, but that's that's interesting. It, it's funny. I think uh, Douglas Ling, you know, Big Pete is our, our kind of baby. He was the first of the regional malts. Um, I'm obviously representing him tonight. Um, and, you know, he's, he's always going to be our most famous whiskey. But certainly I know me and Fred and our, our ambassador, Stuart, have got a real soft spot for, for Rock Island. I think Big Pete is, is stunning in what it what it achieves, um, as are the other regional malts, but I've got a really savory palate. So I'm I'm not big on to sweet things and I'm I'm not a huge like really smoky whiskey fan. But for me, Rock Island is just that like savory dream. It's salty, fresh, little bit of smoke. Um, and I just think it's it's kind of perfectly balanced. Um, so I've certainly got a bit of a a soft spot there's some fun in the chat about uh is he taking only one bottle to the deserted island and then glenn adds it exists in four and a half liters so <laughs> <laughs> yeah and even then i think it'd probably be more than one if i know fred yeah <laughs> <laughs> what i what i also um uh, uh remember is uh i think it was two years ago there was this uh, dinner with Fred Lang here, organized by Sinoco, and I was lucky enough to be present. Yes, and I, was, the, the, I was there as well. I believe. Oh, you were there as well. Yeah, I was. The, uh, I was. I was taking backstage that that evening. Okay, okay, okay. But I remember the little uh, evaporators with rock oyster that were yeah. uh, handed out to to put on on your food uh, to just spray some on, and that I, I love that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, so, the, the, uh, little, the kind of, um, I think atomizers is the, uh, the official, yes. official term. Um, but yes, that was a, a fun evening. It was. Uh, it was apparently the May 16th, 2019. So two years and two days ago. Oh, wow. Is that right? Yeah. Fact, yes, I think you are right. Because I think I got a, a memory about that in my phone the other day. Um. And from memory as well, we got a, a lovely uh, May evening for it. Yeah, that was in, in that castle near Brussels. Uh, yeah, it was a great, great evening. But we shouldn't be talking about stuff that not everybody was uh, was present. No, we, should, we shouldn't, you're right. <laughs> Making everyone jealous of Fred drinking 4.5 litres of Rock Island. Yes. 
Um, but no, you you know, all all the points you touched on are absolutely right. Um, and I think with Rock Island, um, for us, it's it's you know, it's always going to have a special place in, in our heart. Um, so I hope, I thoroughly hope everyone is enjoying that whiskey. Mm-hmm. If I'm reading uh, the chat correctly, I think they are. So, uh, and I think also that in the end of the of the tasting, we'll do a little poll about what's your favorite whiskey of the evening. Oh, exciting! I think it's gonna. I think okay. is going to be a very hard choice tonight. But, um, okay. Well, I well I have to vote. I, you uh, you can't because you're co-host, so you can't vote. Okay, good, good. Because <laughs> it's like I always say, it's like choosing between my children. It's mm-hmm. impossible. Can't do it. Um, but on that note, I'm just gonna. Quickly tell you a little bit of, of kind of news. I mean, I think most people are probably ready for the uh, the penultimate whiskey of the evening. Um, but while we're finishing off our cask strength rock oyster, um, I will give you a little bit of insight into Strathern. So um, I, I'm, I'm sorry to be the party pooper again, but I, I can't tell you too much information. Um, but the good news is that we, you know, we bought this distillery uh, two, two and a half years ago now, or two years ago. Um, so we've got spirit that is is aging that we have laid down, which is exciting. Um, and we're starting to release um, very, very small amounts of, of spirit from Strathairn Distillery. Um, but the good news is that over the, the coming months and years, um, the, the supply from Strathairn will become more and more consistent and, and more and more readily available um and we're we're tasting it very regularly just now because we've got some young spirit that is tasting superb i don't know if anyone's had a chance in this group to try some i haven't so but uh we'll we'll, we'll see in the chat if if anybody has right in the chat if you've had a chance to try the first batch because i know i'm biased but it's it's one of the best three to five year old whiskeys i've i've ever had from a a new distillery. Um, it's we we did loads of experimentation with kind of smaller casks with really big flavor influence to increase the surface area, um, and so we've created a, a you know a whiskey that tastes like it's eight to ten years old after three to five years. So it's it's really quite phenomenal. Yeah. Um, so Mark Mark uh, tasted it. He, he agrees it's very good for its age. And other other people are asking for samples now, so <laughs> well, that made me think. So uh, in the in the relatively near future, I don't want to make any any big promises, um, but in the relatively near future, so hopefully this year we might have something to release from Strathern. Maybe it depends on how the spirit matures. This is not me keeping secrets. This is literally down to us tasting every month every every month and then probably every two weeks to how the spirit is maturing so hopefully this year and um, if not definitely next year there'll be some released and then over the following months and years more and more and um, so it's it's a really exciting time and um, and i would definitely suggest that everybody tries to get their hands on some of it because it's uh it's delicious is it there's some good suggestions coming into chat for pre-release parties oh uh, i like that <laughs> Yeah. Let's do news, a Sinoco news. pre-release party. Yeah, I like that. The good news as well is that every time we do one of these tastings, I get sent samples. So okay. it's, a, yeah. it's, a nice, it's a nice excuse for me to get um, to get some more whiskey as well. <laughs> yeah. Glenn, Glenn uh, put it in his notepad, so consider it done, I think. <laughs> I've just... Um, no, I've just... So I've been doing this whole tasting with a, a very small screen on the right with only four faces on it but i've just opened up the whole uh the whole screen and i'm seeing some familiar faces <laughs> uh, so it's good to see it's good to see you all i can see geert and mario um good to see you guys and jean has got an amazing background which i'm a big fan of it's quite it's quite embarrassing that jean is more professional than me for putting a, an official background on <laughs> um, but good, to, good to see you all. Thank you for joining. So, let's move on to our our penultimate uh, whiskey of this evening. So we've got the big Pete Petricor. So, if everyone pours themselves a wee dram. And again, we're 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 ramp. Oh, nice. Yoss has uh, has got the bottle already. 
Very organized. I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. Very curious about this one. So I made all the samples, and I promise you, I haven't tasted any one of these before tonight. So well, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I was very uh, disciplined in not tasting these. Do you want to know a secret? I have not tasted this either yet. All right. So this product um, has only officially launched, a, I believe, a few days ago. I'd like to tell you the exact date. So I mentioned at the start of this tasting um, that you're tasting three whiskeys tonight that have only launched this in the last week or so. Um, you're tasting one of them now. So Big Pete Petricor. Um, and I will tell you exactly when it launched. Here we go. Six days ago. So in the last week, this officially launched. So now, obviously, again, I cannot say there's some things that I am not allowed to say, but most of you will know a festival on Isla that normally happens this time of year. Um, but unfortunately, due to uh, COVID-19, um, this festival is not taking place. So we're not allowed to put that name on the, the gift tube. However, this is our, our bottling in honour of that festival. Um, so we've called it the Petricor edition. And the word petrichor means the, the scent, the, the smell of rain when it hits earthy soil. So in Scotland, there's a lot of rain um, and there's a lot of soil. So this is quite a, this is quite a common thing in Scotland. You have this, this smell when it's raining and it hits the fresh earth and you get that, that smell and that's what petrichor is. And for us, that is one of the amazing things about Big Pete is you get that you smell Big Pete and you get that smell of Petricor, which we've renamed Petricor for obvious reasons. So I think petric, Petricor is one of the most beautiful words in any language. It's it's the same word in Dutch, actually. But uh, oh, really? Uh, it's a beautiful word, I think, uh, for, for yeah, also it, for a very specific um, feeling or emotion or circumstance or whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, it's, it's beautiful word. You know, in Scotland, in, in the UK, it's actually very... Um, a very kind of unknown word not many mm -hmm. people you know we had, we had to explain to 50 percent of, of douglas lane employees and um and people what the word meant um, and as soon as we said it they're like oh that's the word for that that makes yeah. sense so it's it's a scent that everyone in scotland knows but not a lot of people know it's called oh, the word for it yeah, yeah of course yeah so yeah it's it's this everyone says kind of earthy you got kind of damp earth it's like that's petrichor that's the word <laughs> yeah. you're looking for so yeah, it's amazing. So if everyone gives this whiskey a little swirl and a smell, and cheers everyone, Slange. So, <laughs> I mean, it sounds cheesy to say it, but you get petrichor, you get that sort of damp, earthy soil. Obviously you get a, a big kind of hit of peat, as you always do with big peat, but certainly that kind of damp earth um, and a little bit leathery for me is, is definitely in there. So cheers, everyone. There's a, a cheeky question from Wouter. How many casks or spoons of Port Ellen were added? <laughs> That's the blender secret, I'm afraid. Yes. Um, but yeah, spoons, spoons plural is a, a, I'm pleased that that was said at least. Yeah. <laughs> Rather than a singular spoon. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that that I, I think Walter probably knows that that's a, a secret that will stay with Fred, Chris, and Cara. Um, but certainly, it's every batch has Port Ellen in it. There's no doubting that. But yeah, I think um, you know, for me, you get all those amazing kind of flavors of Big Pete. You get that real kind of fresh, leathery peat smoke, and for me, this is. Obviously, with every every edition of Big Pete, we amend the recipe a little bit. We wanted to make this one more of that damp earth and less of the kind of big smoky iodine flavors. So we've we've obviously used used the, the distilleries that, that evoke those fl those flavors a little bit more. So hopefully, everyone agrees that the word petrichor is quite appropriate for this release. Yeah. You definitely get that that flavor. What I what I'm just noticing now as I'm touching the bottle and the and the label is that the the drops of rain on the label are actually a bit you can feel them yeah yeah they're raised 
they're so raised, that's... raised. That was the word I was looking for. They're yeah. raised a bit, so that's yeah, really paid, nicely done. Paid more for that. <laughs> yeah, so that's a, you. It's a special like press printer, and um, that you get yeah. to get that effect on the the label. But if we're gonna, you know, the one thing Scotland has is rain. So if we're gonna mm -hmm. do rain, we're gonna do it right um, on the label. So you can feel that it's uh, it's raised <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, uh, Glenn and Stefan and Mark are now saying embossed, but that's not embossed. Embossed is if it's in the glass. I uh, I feel this is uh, just raised on the on the printing. But anyway, um, I was just trying to point out that it's really yeah. nice to feel this. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's it's, it's cool. I, I I must say I, I was a big fan of that feature. Um, but yeah, for for me, you know, um, Big Pete is obviously our our most known, um, our most famous. Uh, employee um, and he is a he you know he is a Douglas Ling employee he is a friend he is a family member um, and he is the one that started the whole regional malt journey um, Big Pete was originally released as a, an experiment and as a something Fred wanted to do um, and people told him that he was crazy because he was using some poor Ellen um, to put into a blend which was crazy um, and people loved it so much that 12 years later, this is the single biggest product that we sell. Um, and it's in 70 countries. It's, it's in, you know, taken to a, a real mainstream audience now over the globe um, with lots of limited editions with the 12-year-old. Um, and it's, it's really a, a quite an amazing story from, uh, for the last 12 years from Big Pete. So, mm. yeah, it's a lot of fun. And this is year... It... Sorry, yeah, go on. The... Yeah, there's a, there's a question from Wim here that he asked uh, earlier too. So you, you've obviously spent a lot of uh, time and work on uh, Big Pete and uh, on special editions of Big Pete and developing that as a as a as a as an expression or as a brand, if you want. And he asks, is are there any other plans with any of the other regional malts to do uh, to to work on them more, even more like the way you did with Big Pete? Yeah, I mean. It's an interesting question. I don't want to. I don't want to answer too with too much certainty because ultimately it's uh, it's not been decided and it's not my decision. Um, mm -hmm. But I think if you look at the the pat the pattern that Big Pete has gone on, certainly we know that we can we can do more limited edition releases and more bespoke bottlings of Big Pete because the demand is higher. So as the demand grows for Scallywag and Timmer's Beastie and Rock Island, um, then for sure that will allow us to be able to do more um, experimental stuff with them, definitely. Um, but again, as I, as I mentioned earlier on, I'm sure Glenn and the Sunoco team will tell you that we already do a lot of limited editions of all of the whiskies. Um, you just need to know where to find them. So mm -hmm. uh, with Epicurean, we're doing the Wood Series and the City Editions. With Timmer's Beastie, we've got the Aged and the Meet the Beast and various other bottlings. With Scallywag, um, we've got tons. We've got this Winter Edition that's coming this year, Chocolate Editions, Aged Editions, 100% Sherry Editions. Um, with Rock Island, we've got 1821. We've got a really exciting Cask uh, Edition that's coming of Rock Island this year, um, which I can't tell you too much about, but um, it's really really cool um, so we're, we do loads of limited editions of, of all of the bottlings but certainly the, you know, the size that Big Pete is now allows us to do more bespoke bottlings and things like that yeah that, that answer the question okay We'll see if uh, if Wim says in the in the chat if that answers his question. Okay, so he also suggests uh, a one to one crossover like Big Pete and Goldrins. I think he means uh, just combine those two or combine yeah. some of these with each other to make new stuff. Uh, like well, uh, you, I think uh, Wim has a a glass and he has those two whiskies. <laughs> um, so <laughs> take over as the as the blender for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, some great tasting notes coming uh, coming in here too. Uh, what's what's uh, what do I see? I get some orange zest in the nose, earthiness finishes peat peat peat. Um, yeah, again some nice tasting notes from from Mark. I just the last sentence: a long, sweet, drying aftertaste on ashes and seaweed with licorice on the deathbed. Great stuff, he says. So yeah. that's 
It's poetry, man. Death bed for a fifty-eight point three percent whiskey is uh, is about bang on. That was a, what was I was going to ask because it says fifty-eight point three, but it says fifty-three point eight on the bottle. So is oh it a God? <laughs> so somebody, I think it's fifty-three point eight. Somebody's made a. Hold on. Let me find it. Oh, you're right. Fifty-three point eight. <laughs> it's just the presentation that's wrong. It's yeah, not it's all the, the labels. Is wrong. Somebody <laughs> blame the marketing team. Yeah. I think the marketing team were maybe doing sampling and writing the, the slide at the same time. That's maybe the problem. Good good question again from, uh, well, it's a cheeky question. Is there any glue in the whiskey that helps sticking the whiskey on the mouth because this has such a long finish? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, no. <laughs> uh, no, no well, it's not a question, I think. right. I mean, it's <laughs> that is something, you know, we always talk about, um, we always talk about non-chill filtration and, and high strength. And it's something I say so much that sometimes you forget to explain why it's important. Important. So the the high strength for me keeps all the flavor in the whiskey. Um, having a whiskey non-chill filtered, there's a debate in whiskey whether that makes a difference or not. And I just think the fact that there's a debate is, for me, it's crazy because it's so obvious for, for anyone that's tasted um, chill filter whiskey versus non-chill filter the, the difference is in the mouth feel mm -hmm. so a, a chill filtered whiskey I, I, hey, there's a lot of great whiskeys that are chill filtered i'm not you know i'm not speaking ill of those but there's a definite lighter easier drinking mouth feel for whiskeys that are non-chill filtered you get more of those fats the oils the proteins all of that flavor that makes it kind of thicker and more mouth coating. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's why we never chill filter whiskeys because the mouth feel is, is so different um, in my opinion. And that's why you get that gluing coated kind of flavor because we've not stripped all the good stuff out this whiskey. We've kept it all in there. So it's, it's almost kind of thicker and more creamy and chewy and things like that. You should be able to drink a whiskey and chew on it a little bit. That's, that's part of the, the joy and um, yeah. our point of view in belgium we have an expression that says some drinks are like a glass sandwich uh so it's food and drink in one yeah exactly <laughs> i think if, if if anyone in here is a beer fan like me it's then, more it's more about beer but i i, I guess yeah. uh, <laughs> well belgian beer and finally people that are after my own heart i'm a big i'm a big beer lover and i love belgian beers and i love you know high abv and really interesting beers so a lot of beers my friends make fun of me for drinking a main course. They say that beer is like a main course that you're having. Um, mm -hmm. so that that for me is kind of like this whiskey. You have a yep. tiny little tiny little main course, but it's got mouth feel and it's got more about it. That's that's for me. It's one of the best things about drinking whiskey neat or drinking any any mm -hmm. spirit is that the mouth feel is much more enjoyable. It's velvety. It's creamy. It's it's full, and that's. That for me is a big part of the enjoyment. Yeah, uh, and also Glenn is uh, is telling you, Dale, that he sent you a uh, briefing for a new limited edition Belgian Scallywag adventure series. So uh, I oh, think that's Glenn, in the well, making too. Nice. <laughs> the fact that Glenn has announced this in the tasting means that uh, all wheels are in motion now. <laughs> that's that's Glenn subtly putting the pressure on us to get it bottled now. <laughs> That's that's probably for the for the for the tasting uh, later on this year that yeah. we can uh, do some okay, stuff so like that. Okay, so exclusive exclusive announcement then for everyone in the room: <laughs> we will be doing a Scallywag Belgium exclusive this year. Cool. So there you go. So, I wasn't going to say uh, anything, but Glenn is. Uh, <laughs> we, this is this is a secret for everyone. Get Glenn to drink five or six whiskeys, and then let <laughs> let's see what happens. See what he says. <laughs> So, and that's not only if we win the uh, European Championship, that's definite. Uh... It's happening. Glenn said it. That's cool. It's only if, you... Scotland, it's only if Scotland win the European Championships. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. laughs> that's Sorry, not guys. good news then. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, and just so we've obviously got a few minutes left. We're going to go on to the last tasting, but um, yep. obviously we'll do a, a vote after the last tasting. But if anyone's got any questions for me, then start, I would say, start putting them in the chat now so that we can do the questions and the voting before we uh, before we finish up. Yes, good idea. So let's move on to the final whiskey. So this is the final 
uh, limited edition uh, whiskey, and this is a Belgium market exclusive, which only I believe launched today, if I'm right, Glenn. So I think the the original communications went out about this whiskey today, um, and it's a, a really really exciting um, release. So this is a limited edition whiskey, market exclusive for Belgium only, 600 bottles only, um, and it is the the Big Pete Bruges edition. So really, really exciting. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to, to share this with you guys tonight. Glenn says the, the shipments to the shops are starting tomorrow. Fantastic. Good. So listen, I, I'm tasting this for the first time um, tonight along with you guys. So um, obviously we're going to do some questions and some voting, but um, I want to thank you all for, for taking the time to join tonight. And cheers all to all of you. And um, with this last dram. So cheers. Sanjava. Cheers, everybody. So if you get in the nose, it's so for me, this is really different from the last one. Mm -hmm. I obviously get smoky, I get maritime and stuff like that. But for me, it's much lighter. This is all kind of sea air, peat, kind of barbecue, more of that vibe, much less kind of damp earth, more light sea air. Mark gets Play-Doh on the nose. Play-Doh? Another fun industry to work in. Mm -hmm. So on the, the palate for me, you've got... It's sweeter. It's definitely much sweeter at the start, I think. I get a little bit of that kind of barbecue, earthy peat smoke and a little bit of kind of... Again, when I finish off, it's like a bit of salty caramel because you've got that salt and sweetness kind of combining together with the last bit and then the finish is quite long and if you go back and smell it again for me I get a big kind of waft of smoky bacon and sea salt mm -hmm. so this is slightly higher than the, the regular Big Pete at 48% um, like all of the, the remarkable malts it's non uh, non chill filtered no artificial colouring I uh, and for me, it's, it's quite different than the, the regular Big Pete and quite different to the last one we tried. It tastes to me much more kind of sea air and maritime fresh and mm -hmm. salty and, and sweet. I don't yeah. know what everyone else thinks. Yeah, they're taking their time with the tasting notes now. But uh, what I like about the label is that the guy on the label, Big Pete, is holding a bottle of normal Big Pete to drink. So yeah. he's, not, he's not drinking his own bottle. <laughs> no, no, no. He's a he's a one bottle kind of man. Yes, he sticks he sticks to the core, Big Pete. Yeah. Um, but for me, I just also want to say, in a perfect world, I think we probably would have tasted this whiskey before the Petricor, but we wanted to finish on the Belgium exclusive. So, mm -hmm. if you guys want to save a little bit of this whiskey and maybe try it in an hour or two when you've had a chance to cleanse your palate, it might be a good idea. Because for me, you're, you're obviously, I mean, this whiskey is great. It's different. But after the, the 53, 54% whiskey, it's it's quite easy drinking. Mm -hmm. So save a little bit. But we, wa we wanted to finish on the um, on the Belgium exclusive. We thought it was a nice a nice way to finish the tasting. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. It was a, it was a marketing decision. <laughs> All right. While people are tasting, do you have any more... Um... Slice the show, Dale, or can you? Uh... I, you know, I don't. Um, I've got one more, which is just to say a thank you. Okay. Um, and it's to also say, you know, for anyone that doesn't already, um, follow us on social media. We've got loads of cool stuff coming up, and you'll see all the latest releases. So I'm sure everyone follows Sunoco already, um, which you should obviously be doing. But you've got Dealing Whiskey, you've got Douglas Ling Dale, which is me. Normally, I, I document my life traveling over Europe, but for the last 15 months, <laughs> it's been uh, me sitting in an office drinking. Um, <laughs> but also on Facebook and Twitter and on Instagram, if you search by brands, so for example, Big Pete Whiskey has its own Instagram and Timmer's Beastie, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then you can find out and, and keep up to date with everything going on at Douglas Lane. Um, but yeah, no, let's say... Let's, uh, Let's get some questions in. Let's get a vote on, on favorite whiskeys and, uh, and yep. see how everyone's feeling. 
Yeah, that's why I was asking if you can uh, stop sharing the screen. I can launch the poll then. Uh, that's, that's I the... can do just that. And then we can see everybody again uh, if you want to. So oh, no, I'll no. start the poll then. And uh, as I said uh, earlier, um, I mean, it's going to be a really hard choice. The choice is not about what the best whiskey is of the evening. I think it's more about what your favorite whiskey of tonight was, uh, which is a better way of talking about these whiskey, I, these whiskeys, I think, because maybe if we do this again tomorrow, you'll have another favorite of the night. So, um, but just uh, as an uh, as an uh, an intro to that, here's the poll. So please get voting. Uh, Dale, you and me, we can see as the voting progresses what people are voting. They cannot. Oh, they can hey, only see it. They can only see this one when, uh, when I uh, close off the polling and uh, and share it with them. Oh, this so, is so. Uh, yeah. And while we're doing that, um, there's some nice tasting notes again in the in the chat. Peat smoke, ashes, brine, salt, wheat tar, hospital rooms. Um, so yeah, maritime, yeah, surprisingly funny. fresh. It's funny. A lot of the tasting notes with uh, kind of Isla whiskies are not that. They don't sound that flattering, but hospital yeah. rooms is definitely, definitely <laughs> an Isla whiskey tasting note for yeah. sure. As, as, at least they're not saying hospital food, uh, which, which... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. very true, very true. So yeah. Wim is asking, where can we sign up sitting in an office to drink? Uh, I guess just sign up uh, Douglas Lang on Facebook. Just yep. send an email. DouglasLang.com. <laughs> this is the job. Yeah, are you coming to Ghent in October for the festival, Dale? Uh, That's absolutely the plan. Absolutely the plan. Yeah. So, um, Sunoco, I'll, I'll be there with Sunoco, um, and you know, providing we can travel and everything, mm -hmm. um, then I will absolutely be there. Yes, mm -hmm. wouldn't miss it for the world. The sooner I can get on a plane, um, the happier I will be. Which is something I would did not think I would be saying fifteen months ago, but. Here yeah. All right. I see 20 of the 21 people have voted. I think uh, we can close off voting now. I think we've got a winner. Yeah. Let's share the results with everybody. There you go. Nicely evened out over different ones. Uh, the Rock Oyster Cask Strength wins uh, wins the vote tonight, but it's it's a close vote. I mean, I think we can agree that all of these whiskeys are really nice. Uh, and it's, as I was seeing in the chat also, it's the, Taz, is, Taz was saying, this is the hardest one of all the masterclasses to choose uh, a favorite one. So um, I think that sums it up quite uh, quite well. Yeah, um, I think you're right. I like, I, obviously, I think with a tasting like this as well, the cask strength ones tend to dominate the flavor profile. Mm -hmm. So it's the fact that rock, ice or, rock oyster cask strength and big petrichor are at the top most dominant in flavor intensity um but yeah that's that's good to see mm -hmm. absolutely nice i'll I, stop I feel, sharing i feel kind of bad i feel kind of bad for big pete bruges now because i should have tasted it before the the petrichor but yeah. uh i'm sure think, i'm sure everyone will get a bottle for their shelves with the the big pete and bruges i think so one. too I'll stop sharing this so we can uh, we can see everybody again. And as I suspected, Mark uh, has posted his uh, report and his tasting notes on his blog, wivy.be, uh, blog.wivy.be. The, the link is in the chat. So people, if you want to check that out, uh, go, go ahead. Uh, it's always fun to read those uh, on his blog. Um, if there's any more questions, please, it's not, now is the time because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to going on i'm going to go on to uh finish the official part of the tasting uh, in a couple minutes now i think uh and can i ask 10. for a can i ask for a quick photo if everyone's up for that if anyone's not wanting to take part in the photo then, the photo, then switch off your cameras but if anyone is wanting to take part in the photo then switch on the cameras and give us a wave and i'll give you i'll give you a countdown so we can all be ready so i'm going to share this i'm going to share this on social media so if anyone is not happy then Switch off your camera, but oh, we're getting everyone coming on now. Yeah, yeah. they all want to be on social media. Nice. <laughs> okay, guys, so give us a wave in three, two, one. Nice. What a, what a beautiful bunch of people. It's well, not, we are it's, Belgians, you know. Yeah, this is true. It's not the whiskey talking nope. either. <laughs> 
All right, guys. Um, I don't see any quest any more questions coming in. Uh, thank you all for uh, for joining us. Uh, I don't know if you have any last words to the to the Flemish audience, uh, Dale, that you want to um, share. Yeah, no, absolutely. A uh, similar similar to what I said at the start. Um, you know, I really appreciate you guys joining. I know this was the the second date we planned, and I, I'm really grateful for you all who who came on and and changed your plans to make it. So. Um, I've really enjoyed myself tonight. I'm, I'm, it's great to see some familiar faces and some new faces. Um, I want you all to stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to coming and seeing you in Belgium um, in the near future. So thank you, everyone. All right. Uh, for my part, I want to thank you, Dale, for the, uh, for the time you took, for all the explanations, for walking us through these eight brilliant uh, blended malts. So thanks, uh, thanks to you. Uh, Sinoko, thanks for uh, organizing this. As uh, as always, always uh, a pleasure to be hosting this for you. Um, you'll be able to re-watch this in a couple of days on the YouTube channel uh, if you have any more things that you want to go back to. Uh, and if you want to uh, check out more masterclasses from Sinoko, check out the Facebook page, Sinoko Spirits. There's some more coming on. And as we have um, agreed upon during the tasting, there will be more in the, in the in the fall, uh, more Douglas Lang tastings too. So um, thanks you all, thanks to you all guys and see you on the next occasion. And a huge thank you to Jurion as well. <laughs> Good job. Cheers guys. Thanks guys. Take care everyone. <laughs>